Good morning, world. Good morning. And today on Subject and Brian, angry mobs versus peaceful protesters. Snorting and shooting up in Oregon. And why are certain girls breaking track and field records in high school left and right? I'm Cedric. And I'm Brian. And this is Cedric and Brian. Hi, right, Cedric. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a video clip of some uh, angry mobs. I mean, so bad that the camera's shaking, and this is going on during the uh, counting of the votes. Okay. NBC All right. So Monday check this out. Live in Detroit, following some breaking news there, and apologize because the camera is shaky because of what is happening behind her. Heidi, you have some news uh, on the ground there at that counting facility. What is actually happening behind you? Yeah, Eamon, behind me is Detroit's TCF Center. This is where poll watchers are racing to try and count all the votes outstanding here in Wayne County. But what we see here is essentially an increasing mob-like scene of self-proclaimed poll watchers who say that they want to get access to the building. So many of them have rushed into the building here that I'm actually talking to official Democratic poll watchers from the Democratic Party who've been shut outside of the balloting room, which they are supposed to have access to. Eamon, it's gotten to the point where we do have a police presence here that is blocking access to the building because not only have they swarmed Hi, the room. Those mobs looked pretty darn angry. Don't yeah, they think? did. They did. Frightful. I mean, I can see why that camera was shaking. It's uh what does, isn't the camera shaking? Isn't that the cameraman's responsibility? <laughs> yeah. I mean, nowadays the whole shaking camera thing is silly because especially on a network like MSNBC, I'm sure that they have all of the good equipment that keep, even a channel like ours, I can keep the camera from shaking if I wanted to. You know, little theatrics going on. And as you can see from that video clip, <laughs> they, they're not very angry. They're no. just people milling around is all I could tell. Well, that's angry mobs that I saw. They had on riot gear and masks, but they were, these are women in high heels, guys in suits. It didn't seem like an angry mob to me. And let's compare it to this. I, I'm sure a lot of you that watch our channel remember this video, and this is from a fiery but mostly peaceful protest. Uh, what you're seeing behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin over the course of the night, a second night. So that's a mostly peaceful protest. Now I see the difference. Yes, but the other one was a mob. Yes. So again, uh, two, weeks, two, two episodes ago, we put this word up there. We're going to bring it back. Hypocrisy, <laughs> girls and boys. Can you say hypocrisy, boys and girls? I don't think we can use boys and girls. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Dang, I'm that's sorry. Right. We just misgendered <laughs> point that. zero zero something percent of the population. Right. Anyway, so... Who's being fooled by this? Who's, who's being fooled by seeing fire and flames and people throwing bricks and carrying clubs and calling that a peaceful protest versus well-dressed people who are just standing in front of a polling place in Detroit? You know what? Who's being fooled? I guess the 74 million people, is it 74, right? That's about right, yes. Yeah, 74 70. million that voted for Biden. Those people, I guess, believe the media because obviously if these numbers are right, the media has set the narrative. The narrative won the day. Even though Trump got the second highest total votes in the history of this country, uh, you know, it was, it's like Phil Mickelson going against Tiger, though. You know, Phil might have been the best player of his time. Yeah. Except for Tiger. So apparently Biden's the best candidate we've ever had for president of the United States, according to CNN and MSNBC, because he got the most votes of anyone. Now, do you believe he's more popular than Barack Obama? No. Not at all. Not at all. I didn't even vote for Barack. <clears throat> I mean, anyway, we just wanted to point out this again, the hypocrisy. So this is your mainstream media. One was CNN, one was MSNBC. It doesn't matter who. They're all the legacy media. They're going to feed you this narrative. People apparently buy it. Cedric and I don't buy it. We hope you don't buy it. It's a damn shame. <laughs> all right, next topic. We want to go through one of the uh, bills that was passed in the great state of Oregon where, yes. where nothing controversial or bad goes on. No, no. not at all. Although I still think they're writing from how many months ago? Oh, geez, I forgot now. It's like it's commonplace now. I, for, I forget. I don't think Portland ever stopped. No. And I have a, a, a friend of mine who watches this, and he said that they had to bring in uh, the police for the Portland airport, apparently. 
So anyway, that's good old Oregon. So now, if things aren't bad enough there, the people of Oregon all decided that they want to make things like cocaine and heroin okay to do on a small scale. They're no longer going to arrest them. Yeah, now they said small amounts, did and they define what small amounts is? Basically, we're using it for personal use. Okay. So if you're shooting up and you just, you're not intent on selling it, then uh, it's okay. And, and if you do get caught, I guess, in public, then it's like a $100 fine. And uh, we just want to talk about the pros and cons of that. I've, I've, I've brought up a little spreadsheet here. Yeah, because we were talking about this before we started filming. And we um, gradually escalated it from, like, well, you were talking about this, the perils of alcohol. And then we graduate to the perils of having marijuana, but now we've graduated to the perils of having cocaine and heroin. Yeah, so the first question I have, we've all accepted because prohibition didn't work. We all accepted that alcohol, we're gonna allow that to be legal in this country. So my question to, to you, do you think society is better having alcohol legal? You know, if you're gonna weigh the pros and cons, is it okay? You know, and that's just a decision people can have to make. Mm -hmm. If you look at numbers, we can go back to the coronavirus. You know, they'll have you believe that any death is, one death is too many. You know, if you listen to Andrew Cuomo, one death is too much. Yet there are thousands of deaths every year related to alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Not just auto accidents. There's uh, domestic violence that is due to alcohol. There's cirrhosis of the liver. There's other diseases of alcoholism. Uh, and then we get to, obviously, the uh, drunk driving that, that kills thousands of people every year. So, again, you weigh that. Is it, is In society, is that good? It's, is it a, a risk we're willing to accept? Again, this is just my, per this is my personal opinion, is that there's a, certainly I have to teach my kids growing up. Is I, I, me and Brian will tell you, we go out, we'll have a beer, have a tequila, whatever it is. And I tell my kids there's such thing as responsible drinking, mm -hmm. that you have to know what your tolerance level is. Uh, some some people it's two drinks, some it's five. You have to decide what that is for you. After that, after you reach what's responsible for you, then, then you're endangering other people. Me personally, I can't see how you can responsibly indulge in cocaine. I'm sure that you can make it a point, uh, uh, an argument for that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you just for a minute. I'm gonna play devil's advo advocate okay. with your alcohol thing. How many people have you seen? at a bar that think they're drinking responsibly, they're gonna get in their car and you know that they shouldn't be behind the wheel. Myself included? <laughs> you times that by thousands of right. people who think they are drinking responsibly, right. they get behind the wheel. Nobody that goes out and kills somebody in a drunk driving accident thinks that they're being irresponsible. That's the problem with alcohol. You can't think, you get to a point where you're not making rational decisions. Right. So again, I understand I'm not a, a teetotaler. I'd like to have, you know, we talk about the keel all the time. As a society, we've accepted that alcohol is okay. Then we took the next step here in California. We, we talked about pot. Right. Okay. If you do it responsibly. Here's my question. I, I work at a, a clinic. For those of you who don't know, I'm a chiropractor. I cannot tell you the t amount of times that somebody walks in reeking of marijuana. So obviously they're driving, Right. they've come to the office, they're stoned, but th I guess that's okay. Because we've accepted it in California that that's acceptable to be able to do marijuana. Because it's so new, they don't have that prohibition. They don't, they don't think it affects them. Right. Okay? Right. So, so that's just the two that, well, to, I, those, those two drugs, let's put them aside. We know that people can be responsible. They get a little stone. They get mellowed out. If they stay at home, I don't care. But now we're getting into things like heroin as a whole. Right. Is there a responsible heroin user? I, that's what I'm saying. I, I can't see. Once we've opened this Pandora's box, like I said, we've gone from alcohol to marijuana, now to cocaine. It's like I can't see how you can do that responsibly. But that's the price we're going to pay if we keep opening Pandora's box and keep making what's permissible wider and wider. And Cedric and I grew up in the 80s. The 80s cocaine got so bad, people were dying from overdoses of cocaine because it's the type of drug, and they've done studies on, the, on this, it's one of the only drugs that they'll, they'll, put, they'll set up a little experiment with a rat, and if a rat taps on something, he'll get cocaine. 
That was the one drug that they'll just keep tapping until they die because it is so addictive. So people who haven't tried it, don't try it because it doesn't make you hallucinate. So people who don't like to lose their mind, <coughs> they're okay with cocaine because all it does, <coughs> all, right? Sorry. Yeah. all it does is, is give you kind of a euphoric feeling and it, it, get, it makes shy people be able to talk and go out into crowds. But there's a sinister part of it is that it is really addicting. So when you do it, you all there's this little mechanism that you just want to do more. It's kind of like sugar. When you eat sugar, you just right. want some more sugar. Right. But sugar kills you over a long, long time. Cocaine can kill you much, much quicker. Much quicker. I still remember, like, like Brian and I said growing up, both playing sports, me being an avid basketball fan, those of you who you probably remember Lynn Bias, great uh, power for, for the University of Maryland back in 1983 and 84. And coaches always said back in that time that only one player rivaled Michael Jordan during that time in the ACC, and that was Lynn Bias. Uh, 1983, 1984, he was drafted by the Boston Celtics, went out and partied with his friends, tried cocaine for the first time, dead. And here was a guy, he was, I mean, he was built like a Greek god. Yeah. And you just never know how it's going to affect you. Right. And then let's take that because... They put it in the same category during uh, for this bill in Oregon as heroin. I don't understand how heroin can be viewed as okay. Just think of those pictures you have of, of heroin addicts. They're just strung out on the streets. Right. Most of them end up homeless or at least semi-homeless because you don't have a care in the world. It makes you feel so euphoric and so good that all you want is your next fix. And we know that the withdrawals are horrible. Why on earth would they say that this would be okay? You're, you're removing a barrier to keep people away from doing it. The reason that people drink, you pretty much hit 21 and, and that's a rite of passage. You just go out and drink unless it's against your religious beliefs or you know right. if you just made that decision. But you want to do that with something like with heroin that is so addictive right. and so detrimental and so I'm going to take because I'm I'm more of a, the libertarian slash conservative. Cedric's probably more of the conservative slash libertarian. We both want freedom to do things and keep government out of our ways, but we both believe that government has a role. So you have to look at society as a whole. It's not just about me. It's not just about Cedric. It's how is this affecting other people? How is it affecting society? Alcohol already, we already know, affects society negatively. Now you're going to take heroin, which destroys people, destroys families. So it's not about being a libertarian. It's like, hey, what that person wants to do is okay by me. It's their own body. But it doesn't just affect them. It affects their family, their friends, and then it affects society when you have needles and people sleeping on the streets. Right. And Brian touched on it real briefly. I'm not going to get too much into it. Brian talked about you know, your religious beliefs and they are what they are. And that, that old book it talks about... Don't get drunk. It says nothing about drinking. So you can drink. I, and as Brian knows, my kids are a little bit older. Uh, my daughters and uh, my son, sometimes me and my son will meet for a beer. I, to me personally, I see nothing wrong with that. And I know that there are parents out there who don't mind sharing pot with their kids. Me personally, for me and my family, it's not something we do. How do, you sit, how do I sit down with my son and say, hey son, why don't you come over, break out, we'll put a little powder on the album, and we'll just snort? <laughs> Or let's, let's just shoot up a little. Yeah, I just that's just taking it to a... I mean, you, you have bars. You have bars would permit alcohol. And like Brian said, he touched on it very eloquently. I mean, people go to bars and they overdo it. I just can't see a place where you just openly go in and start doing cocaine. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to take a little different uh, perspective than Cedric. I would separate cocaine and heroin even, even though, you know, I don't... I'm not... I wouldn't recommend either right. because like you said... People that do cocaine get addicted to cocaine. They, their lives are destroyed. Um, but heroin, you can't just go and do a little heroin. There's no reason to go just do a little heroin. When people do heroin, it's so they can veg out and just sit on the couch or, or lie on their bed and just be in euphoria land. Uh, it's not like going out and having one beer and socializing. Uh, you don't really socialize when you're, when you're doing those heavy drugs. Where cocaine, you do. So cocaine is actually a... It was big in the 80s because it made people go social, you know, socialize, but then, unfortunately, it's so addictive, it killed people. Yeah. I know we're going to move to our next topic soon. I'm going to end up by saying, just say no. <laughs> okay, Nancy. Um, before we go there, though, um, the one argument for it and, and the reason, you're probably saying, well, why would it even pass? They sold it as a way to raise money 
for drug and rehab facilities. But there's two things against that. One, we had a police officer that we saw who says that by having it illegal, at least it creates some barrier. So if they arrest somebody, they, at least they can't get their drugs for two, three, 24, 48 hours. Yeah. So at least they have to dry out. Almost forced to detox. Yeah. Whereas now you won't. You'll slap them with a $100 fine. They move on. They're, you know they're just going to do it again. And he said uh, the way you could have raised money for more facilities since alcohol is already legal, tax alcohol a little bit more, put those towards rehab facilities. There's no reason why you have to create more addicts just to raise money for more addicts. So yeah. that's just, that's how I wanted to end this. Okay. All right. All right. And then what was our last topic again? Oh, Talk I remember. <laughs> this one's a, it's a, it's a hot button with a lot of people. We saw a great video about a young gal um, who was very, very good at what she did in high school. I think it was the 200 meters. She, she was the, it might've been the, it was the sprint. So it was sprint. 100, 200, up to 400 meter yeah. races. She was number five in the state of Connecticut. Right. Number five in the state of Connecticut. And she had worked on like, and she goes into great detail talking about how she gave up some things that she really liked, ice cream and the pizza and the staying up late and watching what she ate and drinking water and competing really hard just to shave seconds off her time. Milliseconds. Milliseconds, yeah. which makes the difference in a race. And then all of a sudden they allowed transgender women to compete because they decided that they are no longer men, but they are women and they okay that. Yeah. I have a big problem with that. Yeah, so she she was been training since she was a little girl. She's worked her way up. She gave up lots of stuff. So for those of you who are um, elite athletes, my daughter was a gymnast. One of her friends is going on to college. She's in college now as, a, as an elite gymnast. You give up a lot. You give up most of your social life because you're training. So this young lady gave up a lot of her social life so that she could be the best because she had a innate gift as a fast runner so she trained so she could be the best. She ended up being the best in her school, number five in the whole state of Connecticut. She had she had records and then all of a sudden these the state of Connecticut allowed these two men, two boys, who said they were transgender, now all of a sudden they can compete with all the other girls. So here we are, especially as teenagers, teenage boys, mm -hmm. they develop much differently than teenage girls. Absolutely. I don't care how stocky and big and muscular a teenage girl is. She, she may be as stocky and muscular as one of the middle of the road teenage boys. And don't get triggered by what Brian is saying. It's just, it's just facts and it's facts just, don't yeah. care about your feelings. What, Men do, why do we have the W? Why do we have the WNBA? Right. Right. Why do we have women's track? Why do we have women's sports period? If it's because women, and most sports can't compete with the men. It's just biological. On other things, absolutely. But when we're talking about just physical ability, you're not going to see it. So the example she brought up is, uh, what's her name? Allison? Allison Felix. Allison Felix. Uh, if you watch the Olympics, Allison Felix is one of the fastest women in the world at the 400. Mm -hmm. Okay? Bar none. She won the Olympics. She's not even the middle of the pack when it comes to male runners. I think she said high school. Male high school male runners, yes. Yeah. She's not even the average high school runners that are at the top of their game would beat an Olympic Olympic athlete who is a female. And now you want to let transgender women, is that what they call it? Yes. Yeah. Transgender women, so biological men compete with women. You just ruin what women have been fighting for to be able to compete and earn degree or earn uh, scholarships in their sport so that they can go on and compete against other females and move up the ranks. Well, I think she wanted to say that although these two transgender women, although they accomplished all these goals and they went on to state, that their times still wouldn't have been. Oh, they wouldn't have. They, they would have competed for the male version. No, they would have not made the teams for the elite males. Yeah. So don't get triggered by this. It's biological. It's just. You know, it has. It's it's not being sexist. It's the reason why there are is women's sports. You they can't compete on the same for the most part. They can't compete on the same playing field. So I think at my age, I still can compete on the, in the WNBA and, and sit on someone's bench and get paid. <laughs> Didn't I have a starting spot? Don't uh, don't, don't remember that. that. <laughs> I don't play defense. I know I don't. <laughs> it's irrelevant. Uh, so it's it's not fair. So you want to talk about fairness. They want to talk about fairness for the 
very, very small population of transgender um, females that are out there. But then what you're doing is you're taking all of the biological females out there and now they don't get a chance to win their scholarships. They don't get a chance to get their trophies because now they're competing against boys. And I hate the argument they tell these girls like, well, we'll get better. Run faster, get strong. It's like it, it's biologically impossible for them to compete against males. Yeah. You want to talk about fairness? Let's let's take sports at least. If we're going to do something, take sports at least down to the genetics. If you're genetically a female, you have the XX chromosome, you compete with the females. If you're XY, doesn't matter how you identify yourself, you should not be able to compete with women. Absolutely. So anyway, that we brought that up. Um, in our next episode, we're going to start answering some of the comments because we're getting more comments. Yes. Very good comments. Yes. And uh, we're going to add that as a segment to our show, but I know we went long this time, so we're just going to leave you with that. Yes. Well, uh, we're going to add the comments to our next show, but thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. Our numbers are growing astronomically. Uh, make sure you continue to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and share our videos with everyone you know so we can reach that 2,000 subscriber mark before the end of this fiscal year 2020 so we can all get to the end of 2020. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Please leave your comments in the comments section. And until next time, I'm Cedric. I'm Brian. See you in the next episode.